Good morning on this sunny day, wherever you are in the world. I hope it is sunny and I hope it is bright and I hope you're feeling really positive. It's always good to be with you. Good morning, Phoebe. Good morning, Graham. And greetings to all our viewers and listeners. Yeah, absolutely. And if you hadn't noticed, we are two today. We are not three. Our very good colleague, uh, our wise colleague, Muhammad Shukri, is unable to be with us today. But we have got something which we hope is going to add value to you and help you as a listener, uh, a viewer on our po program, podcast and leadership ch channel uh, on YouTube the Leadership Challenge Middle East. So, Phoebe, here's the suggestion today. We might say that life, you've heard this expression, life is full of ups and downs. You heard that expression? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. life is a roller coaster. You might even say that. Sometimes we're on a high, sometimes we're on a low. This is life, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have an expectation of things that are going to be really exciting. We have a big project. We have things that we're looking forward to and crash. There is a tidal wave of disturbance or even just an off switch that's been pushed. And we maybe are in darkness. We are maybe lost. And what we need to do is to get over this and move forward. So I'm going to suggest that the title of our discussion today is Leadership and Resilience. How do you feel about that? Thank you, Graham. I really love this topic and I was reflecting in our, as, we, as you are sharing that, as life comes in with ups and downs. And I was having a podcast and in, in that, uh, one of the guests was also sharing that, you know, life is like waves. It comes sometimes with uh, ups, it comes sometimes with downs. And how, as we, as you, as you always highlight to us, leadership is everyone's business. And how, as a leader, we should be resilient in our day-to-day -day life and what way we can achieve that, whether it is in the work, whether it is in the workplace, whether it is in our life in general. So. This is an apt topic which probably help to reflect yeah. for us as well as for our viewers and listeners. Let's let's first define what resilience is. To me, it's quite simple. Resilience is the ability that we have to bounce back after a difficulty, even a calamity. That's a big difficulty, an issue. And, and, and our ability to bounce back really quickly, to bounce back and to be back on track and mm. continuing on positively. Why do you think resilience is important, Phoebe? Yeah, I, I, in, in, in my perspective, you know, there, there are uh, uh, situations in which we, we may feel... Uh, like being fallen down on the ground and we may feel that there is no one to help us and i think that resilience aspect help us to be motivated to stand up again as as you mentioned the term bounce back so uh, you, you know we, we we should be if we have fallen down how can we gather together to come up again to face the challenges which we are facing and and again uh, i i bring a meaning of resilience is like you know how can we reset ourselves from what happened yeah. resetting and uh, um, you know course correct so that we may find new paths sure. to move ahead so that is why i think resilience is uh, important um, in my angle. And and uh, Graham, I like to ask you one thing at this point. C can you share a personal experience where your resilience was tested as a leader? Well, yeah, you know, in 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 my pre previous existence, uh, when I was producing television drama, uh, there were challenges when 
the program might be threatened with cancellation. And I've got a team of 80 sometimes people involved. And so I had to really work with them to do the best they could so that uh, we, we were going to fight this potential threat, which would have led to many people losing their jobs. And mm. I was guiding them and motivating them to deliver the best that they could, given particularly in the situation that there was a threat that they'd be out of work. Uh, and this is a common situation, unfortunately. You know, and, and some people can, in the corporate world, can be affected such that they are retrenched, that they are told, I'm sorry, you have no more, we have no more positions for you here. Uh, please finish up uh, tomorrow or to say this afternoon. And this t is situation it is fairly critical because it can be sudden, it can be without warning, and it, they can. this person can feel, what did I do wrong? Well, what you did wrong was be a number <laughs> and your number came up in a sense. There was nothing personal about this. It's just the way it was. And, of course, we know that over the last 30 or so years, retrenchment has been a, a, a or downsizing organisations has been a, a fairly commonplace. And I know of people who have in many ways thrived as a result because they get a payout and they move on to another company and life goes on. But still so, people can feel it's them, it's personal. And in many situations where even if it's not a retrenchment, if it's just that big project that you've been working on for a while and you've given your energy to, uh, you work long hours putting them in to, to make this new project work, and then uh, suddenly something comes along and says, no, the project is not going to go ahead. And the team is then going to feel a sense of loss a, a demotivation um, because it's it's the work that they've been putting their heart into is no longer there. Now, what can happen for some people is that this can can be a, a period of for them for a longer term recovery. When I say that, more than just a couple of days uh, of bouncing back, but they can bounce. They can take longer to bounce back. I will say, and I'm going to say this as a personal reveal, I know that when something like this happens to me, and sure, I might have a major project lined up with a large company, and uh, it could mean a lot of work for me in, in making changes to their senior management or their two or 300 people in the organisation, and then they say, sorry, it's not going to go ahead. And uh, so I know what my processing is, and I know that after about half an hour or so, I'm starting to be regenerated and looking forward to the next opportunity rather than letting this drag me down and rather than walking around with a long face thinking that the world has come to an end. And it's important for leaders to manage and deal with this. So how do you think leaders can do this? Yeah, so maybe uh, this this take me to a story which I have shared a few times, but that that this comes to my mind when uh, when uh, when I was in grade twelve and I have shared that I have scored very low mark. So as an individual, I found in a situation where how can I progress my learning, because from an Indian context. You are less than 50 percentage. Your chance to enter a regular college, getting an admission is a challenging phase. And uh, I remember how my uh, parents supported me. So I see that uh, leadership in my father as well as my mother, who has given me that um, encouragement and the words in which they said, this is not going to impact. This is only a part of life. You have many things else which can be done differently. And, and, and I think that words still resonate with me. You know, life is not what, depending on the grades or the marks, etc. Or, 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 and, and, and the ways in, way in which they uh, provided me a hand, come up, don't, don't be there, <laughs> okay? So I think uh, the, 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 this power of words still 
make me motivated to move ahead, whatever the difficult situation we are in. And, and that is one. And again, uh, from a career perspective, we have been working with um, a financial service organization. And in 2019, we had a um, merger and acquisition situation which happened. And th th there was challenging work environment for many of our colleagues. And I, I personally felt it not a right environment at that time for me to be with that organization. So I left without any um, job on hand. So, so it was a jump without a parachute, you know. And, and as 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 I was just seeing one aspect which I did was trying to connect with people whom I know, which actually uh, helped to find new freelance opportunities in that space. And you know, it is you, then you th then you realize that okay, there are many other opportunities outside. Because you are confined into your space in the in the previous situation, you you are not exploring what what is there out in the world. So I think um, to your question, as as we face such situations, it is it is to have that thought process within us. You know, your life is not um, what happened to you. You can you can make your own new canvas to yeah. draw in. Yes. It's what how you react and what you do as a result that's really important. Now, sometimes in these situations, people might offer help. And sometimes that help is a little bit superficial. Oh, never mind. Oh, just move on. Oh, just get over it. Or it'll be okay. These are these are meant to help, but sometimes they're just really superficial and they don't help very much at all. So what I'm going to suggest the leader should be doing if there is a team situation. Let's just say there's a major project we've all been working on and uh, our client has said, no, sorry, we're not going to move ahead with it. So I would suggest that the team, the leader should gather the team uh, and say, and maybe even not, not in the meeting room, maybe say, let's go out somewhere, let's go to somewhere comfortable, let's go to a different environment. Let's get some fresh air. Let's go outside and sit under a tree. Well, well, let's go to a nice coffee shop and get some quiet space there and say, okay, this has happened and life's like that. We know that it's never going to be a steep climb and never going to be a roller coaster all the way. These things happen. But it's important that each of you know that this is not something that you should take personally. This is not something that uh, you caused even though you might be thinking at the back of your mind, if only I had done this little thing, it would have, no, just let that go. And you might even as a leader have an open discussion and say, I want to go around the room now and just ask, how are you feeling about this? How do you feel about what's mm -hmm. just happened? That's the first step for me in being resilient, understanding how you feel when this difficulty has arisen. And it might be, you know, I, I'm feeling lost at the moment. I'm feeling insecure. I'm feeling devastated because of the great hope that I had for where we were going. Okay. So when there's a discussion about that and, and we share in the group our mutual feelings, by the way, when you say, mention the story that you were involved in, I had some involvement in that as well. Uh, and there were some senior executives that I was dealing with. And I will say these this, these senior executives were feeling very, very unsure, unsure of where things were going. They were feeling un, unease. They were not happy. There was only one person in this group of 15 or so that I was talking to at one stage who was really excited about the change that was going to happen. Because for her, and it was a woman, this is about new things. So she obviously has an ability to bounce back and see positivity in so many things, whereas the other senior and more experienced in many ways, gentlemen, was seeing negatives. So as the leader talking to the group about what the, what's happened, to talk through the negatives of what's happened and then talk through the positives that are, that are going to come as a result of this. And I would say when you've 
ask them how they're feeling and they say, I feel lost, I feel insecure, I feel devastated, I'm not sleeping, then it's a, then what is important is your empathy to those people in that situation. Even to say, you know what? I feel the same too. The first night where I got this news, I was struggling, but now mm. I'm okay. And I know that mm. I'll be okay soon as well. I know this is tough. I know that we have feelings that sometimes are out of proportion with reality. And I want you to be aware of negative feelings about the situation and just say, is that really the case? It might be a cliche to say that the sun will stop, come up tomorrow. and But guess what? It will come up tomorrow. We know that. <laughs> So far in these millions of years, the sun keeps coming out the next day. But for some people, a lack of resilience can lead to depressive states. And mm. this this is not this is not good. So as a leader, I'll be saying, what do you think we should be doing to move things forward? One of the things that would be important would be discussing with them, each of them, or in the group as well, of the positive things that are starting to move as a result of this. As the leader, and talking about the leadership challenge, which we love to do, the leader should be modelling the way in this situation about his behaviours and maintaining his integrity and his or her honesty and genuineness in, in terms of helping everybody. But, but also saying, what did we learn in what's just happened? This mm. difficulty that we are facing, what, what did we learn? And mm. discussion about that. Okay, so are we going to let that happen again? Not if we can help it. So we've learned as a result of this. And then I'd be setting some, some milestones uh, with the group and saying, okay, depending, of course, on the nature of what's occurred, uh, and the nature of their feelings. But I would be saying, I want you in groups to talk about yourself, what you can do to help each other um, to build back from this. And it might be a matter of meeting with one or two of your colleagues regularly to have a coffee. Uh, it might be a matter of talking about the new things that, that we can do. It might be a matter of you coming up with an idea that we hadn't even thought about. And we'll go, wow, that's going to lift us all and we're going to move forward. Is it mm -hmm. important characteristics for characteristic for individuals to have, not only in their personal life, because as we all know, things happen in our personal life, and we must recognise these, deal with our emotions. There you go, emotional intelligence. By the way, people who are highly emotionally intelligent are also highly resilient. And if you can talk mm -hmm. to them when there is a workplace issue of the impact on their resilience and keep them feeling genuinely positive about the way we're moving forward, then that is building in them a strength of resilience for when something like this may happen, as it likely will, in the future, right? Mm, mm. It, it, yeah, that, that, that's that, that's interesting uh, perspective, you know, like how um, how someone reflect on these situations and find energy in that moving forward yeah and also the other part the other important element in all of this is don't take it personally hmm. so often people do because they feel a threat they feel insecure they feel that they might lose their job they feel that, uh, that they might uh, get a demotion or whatever or that the pay rise that was coming is not going to come so they can feel all of these personal impacts and uh, we, we've got to say it's it's not personal in, in nearly all cases. And I haven't got any figures to back this up, but I'm sure that we could we could anecdotally agree that most of these things that occur where resilience is required, they're not caused by that individual themselves. All right? Yeah. Graham, I just want to uh, check in with you right now at this stage, like, uh, you know, sometimes these are times of uh, crisis. Uh, you, you mentioned about the uh, part of empathy here. How can leaders balance the need for decisiveness in some situations like this uh, with with the need for empathy? Hmm. Good question. Uh, de device, decisiveness, not divisiveness. 
decisively yeah. um, is important. But decisiveness and making a quick decision at the expense of the emotions of others is not going to be a wise decision if it's at the expense of the emotions of others, if it doesn't take account of the emotions of others. And quite simply, in, from an emotional intelligence perspective, the, the leader can say, I've got to make a decision. And the decision that I've got to make may not please all of you. I understand that. And I want your input into the decision. I want to know what you're feeling right now. And when I've told you this, the decision that I know I've got to make, I want you to tell me how you're feeling about the decision. And mm. But I, I want you to know that I'm not just in making this the decision on the spur of the moment without considering the impacts on you and on the other circumstances that are involved. So be aware that I'm considering how we are all going to feel in this. And we may not like what I'm about to say, but I want you to be aware that I really do consider as much as I can, your emotions and your feelings. Now for my decision, you're all fired. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. And how do you I, I, I think I'll fired you all? No, no. <laughs> I, I think this is a place where uh, the leadership challenge, um, uh, you know, what we are discussing about is about the leadership challenge by James Kazoos and Barry Postner comes into picture. And I think, um, the five practices of uh, exemplary leadership uh, have quite a huge impact. If, if followed, uh, the five practices uh, Graham mentioned, uh, modeling the way, um, the other four are inspiring a shared vision, challenging the process, enabling others to act, and encouraging the heart. I think this can enhance the leaders and the team's res resilience. So, uh, my, my question is, um, Graham, I, I just want uh, to bring your thoughts here. Uh, what strategies and what are some of the ways we can implement these five practices to foster resilience? Very good. Very good. The first one, we talk about this so often, the model the way. We talk about in terms of the the um, uh, overall aspects of leadership and the fundamentals of leadership we talk about leadership is everyone's business so everybody should be able to make a should be able to discuss what's going on and should be able to act accordingly leadership is a relationship and as i keep saying the closer the better the relationship that a leader has with his or her team uh, the the better it's going to be for everybody when we are in a difficult situation and wanting to build resilience Let's just have create an example in your mind now of the CEO of the organization who makes who sits on the 24th floor in an office by himself and sends edicts to the staff of two and a half thousand and, and just tells people what to do. Where's the relationship? Well, how are they going to feel when there is a dip, there's difficulty? There is a dissociation and a disconnect. So leadership is a relationship. Got to have that in place. Let's talk about model away and and living your values. And in this situation, if the leader says, I'm loyal, loyalty is a strong value of mine. Support is a strong value of mine. Integrity is a strong value of mine. And if you, as a leader, live those values, when the crisis occurs and to help build the resilience of the people around you, you got to demonstrate those values, obviously. And, and they know that that's what you're like. The next one, of course, is inspire a shared vision. So let's, if we're talking to our people about where we're going to be in the next six months or six years, and if they genuinely believe that and they can see that mountain that we're going to climb in, and we're going to get to the peak in six years' time, and that's totally reasonable and we're all going to be excited when we do, we know then that there are little things along the way when we're climbing a mountain that may be difficult, that may be unexpected, but we are still going to get to the top of the mountain. That exciting mm. future is still there. But there may be some rocky pathways along the course, right? Mm. So the next one is, of course, challenge the process. 
And that's about learning all the time. Is there a better way of doing things? What have we learned from this experience that we're now feeling un uncertain about? What, are we, what did we learn about our, ourselves? What did we learn about how we can deal with this? What did we learn about our own uh, ability to be resilient? And what can we learn even more about being resilient? Resilient is such an important topic for leaders to talk about, even before there's a problem, even before there's mm. a core resilience. The next one, of course, is enable others to act. So you could be saying to the people, you know, the, empowering you to make decisions is important. Empowering you to take responsibility is really important. And I'll always do that so that we can bounce back from issues that may have arisen. And the fifth mm. And this is, of course, I think your favourite. You've said this before. This is encourage the heart. So yeah. even when there's crises and difficulties, you know, as a leader, and we let's just say we've got a crisis and we're all feeling down, you can say to people things that will lift them up. I'm going to reveal something very personal, and it's it's was said to me by a dear friend in Dubai many years ago. I hadn't been friends with him for very long at that time. But I guess I was going through a difficult time. I don't know. I, I think it must have been something that prompted him to say this. He said, Graham, one thing that always strikes me, and we know that what, what that means, it always comes out to me about you, is that you're always so optimistic. And I thought, mm. really? <laughs> Is he saying that? I don't think I am. <laughs> but there are times when I remember that and I think, yeah, that's what I'm like. I am optimistic. Mm. So if I felt down a little bit, I'm I'm lifted by what he said to me. And he was he didn't realise he was encouraging my heart, but he was. Mm. He was mm. saying, wow, how about this? Maybe I am. So they're in a short space of time, the, how the five practices can fit into a resilient organisation. But we should be aware and talk about the fact that things are going to happen along the way in getting to the mountain. It's not an easy ride, always. And we've got to be aware of things that might catch us blindsided that are an unexpected circumstances that we had no control over. And how can we get over that? How can we build our own internal feelings of positivity and motivation and help each other to move forward and be a wonderful, resilient, strong team and therefore organisation? That yeah, is that, that's, that's very powerful, Graham, and especially the word you mentioned about optimism, how that, how that drives people to, to try hard to the next step to move into the next uh, for example from that uh, space of despair what can i do next what what are the options in front of me and um, one thing which um, again uh, from my experience is uh, also reflecting on what is your fear what what will happen you know and, and and again, I, I like to <laughs> credit you with this thought process. What if, what if I do this? No. Yeah. Why not? But, <laughs> you know those those questions. We yeah. I think are something which we have to uh, keep keep asking ourselves. And I uh, and and another aspect which is uh, as you as you mentioned, which is coming to my mind is, uh, as you mentioned about a friend. You know, ask. We we also sometimes have to ask for you know, maybe a help. This is something which I'm facing. Sure. And, and, and what, what can I do? And, and when I look into the five practices which we just discussed, I think in those organizations, those places where leaders practice that five practices, modeling the way, inspiring shared vision, challenging the process, enabling others to act, encouraging the heart. I think the resilience act as an engine regularly it, yeah. it is not going to be uh, once in a while but it is continuously making the people resilient you know because there is that uh, last uh, practice encouraging the heart coming from the people in the position of authority and power all the time genuinely coming 
Yeah. Here's one point that I want to make before we wrap this up. So often when people are facing difficulty in their personal life and in their work life, they catastrophize. And by that, I mean that they create a scenario in their mind of catastrophe. So the word catastrophize is a well-recognized psychological term for the way people create difficulty about what might happen. And it's not realistic. So when something happens, try and be aware for you how realistic is what you're creating in your mind. How realistic is that? Bring it back mm. to reality and even talk to someone else about it. When you talked a moment ago about, about um, talking about it uh, when there are difficulties, I, I, I want leaders to be able, to, because of their emotional intelligence, to recognise that one or two people in the team at some stage may not be dealing with things as well as they should be dealing with things. And so if there's been an issue or a crisis or a problem, so it, to me it's up to that leader and it can be someone at the same level as that person just to say, hey, do you want to go and have a coffee? Let's go and talk about things. I'm not sure that everything's going quite as well for you as it should be. Do you want to talk about it? And those words alone can help people move forward because another human being has recognised that they have a difficulty and is offering to help. And that alone can be very helpful. Resilience is important. One final word, Phoebe, before we move on. Yeah, th this again uh, uh, is something which I, uh, I think maybe we can discuss uh, in the next uh, um, opportunities. I, I think uh, wh what role does self-care play in maintaining this resilience? You know, what can self-care do in in maintaining this uh, resilience and and, and another thing which, uh, I, as a closing word, which I just want to say is, you know, there is situations in which we may face challenges, but that doesn't last long. And think in, you know, that, that chatter which is happening in our mind. Yeah. You may have to shut it down and say to that chatter, you know, I have different other pathways to explore. And as a leader, as leadership is everyone's business, I will model a new way to move ahead. Absolutely. And let, let that drive you again. So that's my quick, so not one word, but a couple of words here <laughs> as we wrap up. As, as, as easily as you can. Now, I'm sure when you talk about the way people feel that there are people right now at this point, because you talked about us wrapping up, who will be feeling very sad. There might be people even shedding a tear, uh, be feeling that they're disappointed and let down that this is coming to an end. And they might be feeling themselves a little bit frustrated and a little bit lost and lonely. So let me assure you with great love and consideration, we will be back next week. And I hope that you join us next week. Uh, and uh, we will talk again about what we hope will be helpful for you in the way you are leading pe people. Phoebe, thank you for your wisdom. See you next week. Thank you, Graham. And audience, please uh, subscribe. Always like our content and also spread and share the link so that your friends can also find value from this conversation. And join our Facebook group. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, join our Facebook group.